Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today, we're gonna give you a kind of a quick look and quick first impressions of the two new, pretty exciting Microsoft Surface tablets, notebooks, whatever you wanna call them, uh, that just came out. They just started arriving today. We got both of ours in at the office today. Uh, we have the Microsoft Surface Pro 4 as well as the Surface Book both of which share a lot of traits, but they're also different in a lot of key ways. Um, first up, I'm gonna talk about the Surface Pro 4. I have never actually uh, used the Surface Pro for an extended time period. It's never been my primary uh, machine, but I was very tempted with the Surface Pro 3 uh, just because of the battery life, they had, uh, improvements they made, as well as just kind of some of the functionality that I decided I want using a, a pen, for example. However, I knew that the Skylake parts were coming in the relatively near-term future at that point, so I wanted to wait and kind of uh, get the, the upgraded model here. And this is what we have. This is the Surface Pro 4. It has uh, essentially the same form factor and design as the previous Surface Pro units. It has a kickstand that is adjustable from a very high height, or you can fold it all the way in for a tablet form factor, or you can even fold this pretty far down uh, to get it pretty flat to the, to the surface if you want to do that. The keyboard here is a removable dock. It doesn't supply battery or anything like that, but it does kind of unsnap. It's just magnetic. Again, like the previous Surface Pro designs. Uh, this time you have also this folds up there to give you a little bit of an angle on it. The touchpad is improved on this. You have a fingerprint sensor. The keyboard, even though I've only typed on it for maybe 20 minutes so far, is actually way better than the Surface keyboards that I remember in the past. It has the keys are a little bit separated more uh, and there's a little bit more throw in them than I expected for a device. But now when you still, if you close it, you can actually take this. It's now a completely functional uh, device. Carry it with you. It's very thin, very light. And now I think I just locked this device up as well. Um, in terms of connectivity, on this side, you have your power connector, you have USB port and a mini display port on this side. And then on the other side, you don't have anything because you've got this. This is the uh, surface pin that attaches through magnets. And it's actually a really, it's kind of a, a cool thing, right? So it comes off fairly easily, but the magnets do seem kind of strong. I could see this coming off when you take it in and out of a laptop bag, for example. So that'd be something worth uh, taking uh, note of. It does have a clip up top if you want to be one of those guys and put it in your shirt pocket. I guess you could do that. Up top, power and volume buttons. There's a little bit of ventilation all the way around for uh, the fan that's on there. Now, the screen on this, as I type in my password here real quick, is a three by two screen, the same as on the Surface Book. Uh, it is a 2700 by 1800 something resolution. I don't remember it exactly. Uh, specification wise, the one we ordered is a Core i5-6300U. It has a 256 gig SSD in it. It's actually an NVMe Samsung SSD. We don't know exactly which SKU or controller it's using, but we'll do some more testing on that to figure out what it is. Um, no discrete graphics on this, nothing like that is pretty much this is going to be a productivity machine with some basic gaming capability courtesy of the Intel integrated graphics. Battery life is supposed to be pretty good uh, and I'm excited to test all of that out. And obviously the benefit of this is you get a extremely uh, sensitive and reactive and fast touch screen experience as well as with a pen experience if you want to use OneNote, uh, taking screenshots, sharing things that way. It actually seems pretty useful so far. But let's move that out of the way and take a look at the Surface Book. This is the kind of new guy in the crowd here. It's still a two-in-one convertible. This tablet comes off. Uh, the base is separate from it, but it's obviously a full size, not full size, but kind of a full built keyboard, right? This is, it's fairly rigid. Inside here is a uh, battery. So you extend the battery life of the tablet when this is attached. We also got a model with the integrated NVIDIA GeForce GTX GPU. Now, here's a secret. I've had this device for a couple of hours. I still don't really know what the hell we're looking at in terms of the GPU here. We know it has 384 CUDA cores. Uh, it has one gig of frame buffer dedicated to it and five gigahertz on the memory side. That's your speed. And it kind of, it lists 950 megahertz as a GPU core clock. In terms of performance, it's kind of in the range of a GeForce GTX or GTX uh, 820M probably not going to ring a lot of bells for many people and it, and it probably should not in that regard. Uh, we got like a, uh, a performance score if you compare the integrated graphics on the Intel Core i5-6300U with the discrete graphics in the base itself in like 3 d Mark Skydiver just as a quick test that we ran, you get about twice the GPU performance. So the G integrated GPU is about twice the speed as what you get in here. That will help you with some kind of, you know, 
casual gaming, if you want to play Rocket League, you want to play TF2, some other more uh, higher end stuff, you will be able to play, but obviously at the expense of battery life and uh, some, you know, the power and heat as you would expect. Uh, the keyboard on it is fantastic so far. It's a better keyboard than what you have on this, as you would expect. A lot more throw, it's backlit, uh, it types very well. I'm kind of a picky person in terms of keyboards. When I went from a Lenovo ThinkPad to the Dell XPS 13, the keyboard was probably the one thing that, that has annoyed me, and typing on it is not as, not as good as I would like. This seems to be better than the XPS 13 and maybe up on the level of the ThinkPad devices. The trackpad's great, uh, very uh, clicky, very, it's got a nice feeling to it, very similar to what you get with MacBook trackpads in terms of the feel and the touch uh, of it. Pretty impressive. It still has the magnetic pin on the side. Now the resolution of this screen is 3000 by 2000. Again, a three by two display, uh, but higher resolution than, uh, than the, the Surface Pro 4 would be. It's a little bit bigger screen, it's a little bit bigger device overall. I'll show you a comparison of the two of them here in just a second. I will demonstrate the ability to undock. So because the discrete GPU is in the base and the integrated graphics is up here, to disconnect this you can't just pull it off. If you do, you broke it or you blue screened it, don't do that. Uh, there's a button here that you hold down for a couple seconds, it will go from, uh, it's got a little LED on it, it will go from red to green uh, and it will give you a little prompt on the screen that you can disconnect the device. So we'll go ahead and do that. Can't really see as I turn it from the side. There we go. So we have disconnected it and this works completely now off the Intel integrated graphics. You hear a little chime there as it kind of undetected the NVIDIA graphics being attached. So now you'll have only one battery attached. You'll have different functionality. It's now just a tablet on its own. This is actually a good time to kind of compare the different sizes of these devices. Uh, and you can see if I hold these up, the difference that we're talking about here. So it's, it, it is a, from a mobile device perspective, it's kind of a noticeable gap. Um, they're both about the same thickness. Actually, I'd say the Surface Book tablet is a little bit thinner, uh, but you're gonna get additional battery life with this once you have it attached to the dock. Uh, in terms of, you can also, we'll go ahead and demonstrate this. You can rotate it. It just uses magnets for that purpose. Uh, and fold it back that way. Now you can use it a tablet like this. Uh, you can use it to demonstrate and show things off in that way if you want. And then if you want to detach it, you do the same thing again. Wait for the notification on the desktop, pull it off, and there you go. There is still obviously the complication of when you fold it closed, it doesn't close all the way. You can see the little light coming through there is a little gap uh, as part of the watch band hinge design, I guess, if you will. Uh, but you do get more functionality with the dock. You get two USB ports and a card reader on this side. You get a mini display port and the power connector on this side. The tablet itself actually has no input uh, or output options on it. It is basically just input through the screen uh, and that. So that's kind of an early look at them. We, we kind of did this on purpose. We purchased these units. They have very similar specifications with the obvious difference of the discrete GPU in the Surface Book. Uh, so we'll be able to see kind of how that affects battery life or how it affects performance uh, one way or the other. The other thing we got in is this is the Microsoft Surface Dock. It's new to go along with these devices. Um, you set this on your desk at home. This connects to the input on your Surface. And now you have four additional USB ports. You have two mini display ports, a gigabit ethernet, uh, an audio output, as well as power input. So this will charge your devices while expanding your connectivity. So I'm interested in trying that from, a, from an end user standpoint. Can I make the Surface Pro 4, the Surface Book, my primary computing device, going back and forth between home and the office, when I get to the office, plug this in, uh, have it use all the devices, does it have enough performance to push a pair of 30 inch monitors in my normal workload? I'll be very curious to see how that goes. Uh, we'll discuss pricing and all that stuff uh, a little bit future when we do the full review, but I'm very curious if you guys have any thoughts or ideas about what you want us to test, what you want us to specifically compare in regards to these two devices, either amongst each other or with other Skylake or Broadwell notebooks that are, that are already out there. I know my personal device is an XPS 13, so it will be the, the, the kind of direct comparison for both of these reviews as they come forward. But if you guys have any suggestions, we'll be reading the comments. Uh, and so we look forward to seeing that. That's it, that's a quick preview of the Surface Pro 4 and the Surface Book. Thanks guys, see you next time.